Name one kitchen utensil you use every single day. If a kettle popped into your mind, then you're not wrong. The kettle is something we just love to use. We just can't get enough of it. We'll get to know more about kettles, what we like to call the unsung hero of our kitchen appliances today. First is the intricate design of a whistling kettle, which is for sure intriguing. With the wide availability of gas cooktops around 100 years ago, stovetop kettles became more in demand and turned out to be a popular kitchen appliance. In the early 20th century, we took a huge step in the evolution of kettles with the whistling kettle. The whistling kettle was one of the most commonly used kitchen appliances. The innovation of the whistling kettle is widely accredited to Harry Bramson of London in the 20th century. How does it work though and why does it whistle? Most kettle whistles are composed of a hole running through the middle of the walls of two parallel metal plates through which steam is passed. The boiling water in the kettle forms a flow of steam, which then leads to a rapid vibration in the air, resulting in the creation of the first sound from the whistle. According to Ross Henry Wood and Dr. Anurag Agrawal at the University of Cambridge, there are two mechanisms behind the whistling sound of the kettle. The first one, known as the Helmholtz resonance, occurs when the steam attempts to release out of the whistle, resulting in running in the natural springiness of air that is still trapped in it. The resulting vibrations then produce the initial sounds coming out of the whistle. Then the gradual rise of the temperature of the water, producing more steam, rushes through the whistle's holes, making waves of turbulence, and finally, it generates the whistling sounds to notify those within the ear's reach. So, if you ever hear the sound of your kettle's whistling, be thankful for the phenomenon of Helmholtz resonance for ringing our ears with the call of a brood cup of warmth. And finally, the emergence of electric kettles. In 1891, the first kettle which used electricity as a heat source was devised by the Carpenter Electrical Company based in Chicago, USA. Two years later, Crompton & Co., a firm in the UK, launched their model. But the kettles took 10 minutes or longer to heat as the model stored a heating element in a different compartment. In 1909, the German company Allemain Elektriketatsgesellschaft, AEG, came out with a kettle created by the well-known architect and industrial designer Peter Behrens, whose function of the kettle was also the same, with separate compartments for the elements. They emphasized a fancy design for an electric kettle, made of nickel-plated brass with a rattan handle that served as a cherry on top. Canny Branding, which launched kettles with a variety of designs and focused on aesthetics, was massively popular in the German consumer market. But it was Bullpit & Sons, which originated in Birmingham, the UK, who eventually evolved the kettle game. In 1922, they developed the world's first kettle composed of an electric heating element that is submersible, produced under the label of Bullpit & Sons Swan brand that set the standard for electric kettles for the rest of the 20th century. The materials used in the making have varied, and the designs have been revolutionized, but the composition is basically the same. One feature which has been added to the modern kettle is that the kettle turns off once the boiling point hits, which we know as an automatic kettle. This upgrade was developed by Russell Hobbs in 1956. But what is the science behind it? Every kettle has a magical component, which is a metal coil. Electrical energy flows through the metal coil and instantly warms the water inside once it reaches the boiling point through heat. The thermostat then turns the kettle off automatically automatically when the water hits the right temperature. Next up, the history behind the kettle. The kettle has been used in different parts of the world for centuries. Chinese soldiers and ancient travelers used to boil water as a way to purify the water. Accidentally, they found out that if you add herbs or green tea to boiling water, it formulates a soothing warm drink. Let's move back to Europe, where nomads and warriors used to boil wheat grain in water to bring out a great flavor, which interestingly led to the making of what we now know as malt beer. And how can we forget the good old Mesopotamian civilization, which we all know was situated in Western Asia and is prominently known for its prosperity and human activities that revolutionized our world. The Neolithic Age is known for the development of agriculture, polished tools, irrigation, and the start of settlements. After this period came the Bronze Age and its main features were the increase in economic productivity and the discovery of the bronze metal, which led to the formation of kettles. Bronze, a metal alloy composed of copper and tin, was the first man-made alloy. Archaeologists found a kettle dating back to as early as 3000 BC in the Mesopotamian region and are the earliest vessel found which was used to heat water, and in North America, cowboys were using kettles to make coffee. The kettles that existed in that time period were mostly made from materials that were able to conduct heat quickly, for instance copper. But in China, porcelain kettles and pots were made and used commonly. Before the start of the 19th century, kettles were made from iron, as they were sturdy enough to be put directly on the flame, and by the start of the 19th century, kettle makers switched from iron to copper for its more efficiency. Why are Japanese iron kettles priced even for $300? During recent years, attraction for Japanese iron kettles has reignited their demand based on their aesthetic qualities and their relevance to Japanese culture. For centuries, iron kettles have been made in Japan and were commonly used in the 17th and 18th century, mostly used in tea ceremonies. The reason they're costly compared to other kettles we can find in our retailer stores is that every single kettle is handmade. For this, molds play a huge part, and around 70% of the work is formation of the mold. The liquid iron poured through the holes in the mold fills in the hollowed part and forms the iron kettle. The mold can be used two to three 
three times depending on the design of the kettle. If used more than this, it can degrade the quality of the utensil. Another feature is the dusting of charcoal, which helps to release the kettle easily from the mold. Surprisingly, the uncoated interior of the kettle is considered as one of the main selling points, as they like the taste of the water boiled in these iron kettles. Others also value the minimal amount of iron added to their beverage. How can we forget the Britishers and their love affair with tea kettles? It was considered an elite drink, but after the trade with China, tea became affordable and popular among all classes. Cheaper kettles were found and became a part of the kitchen in every British home. I mean, who can resist a hot cup of brew? Kettles continued to evolve and upgrade, from different materials used as a top coat, such as plastic kettles, to different sizes which suit every person's needs, and onto cordless kettles which are surging at our retailer stores. We simply cannot leave behind kettles, can we? Why are electric kettles not that common in the United States? A kettle is not the standard appliance in U.S. homes, as they are in the U.K. Consumers in the USA prefer to boil it in the microwave or just do it the old-fashioned way, which is the usage of stovetop kettles or a teapot. The usage of coffee makers is notably very common in U.S. households due to the wide consumer demand for black coffee. But what is the reason behind it? Homes in the USA mostly operate in the range of 100 to 127 volts, while houses in the UK and other countries operate at higher voltages, ranging between 220 and 240 volts. This means that electric kettles take relatively more time to heat water in the US household as compared to other parts of the world. Finally, how can we save energy by using our kettles in an efficient way? Do you know that you can save up to 50% more energy by using kettles instead of stovetops as it is more efficient? But you can save more energy by following simple routine changes. Firstly, don't overfill and only boil the amount that you need. Second, go for the insulated energy saving kettles as they will store heat inside the kettle for a longer period than the other kettles and take less power to boil it again. Lastly, clean your kettles at least once a month with the help of vinegar solution to avoid any buildup of lime scale. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think that the kettle is one of the essential items in your home? And what kitchen utensil has made your life more convenient in this fast-paced world? Let us know in the comments below while enjoying a hot brewed beverage of your preference. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Goodbye for now and see you in the next one.